What's up, bitches? All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to check my mailbox. I, I just tracked my uh, AR-15 Armors wrench, and it says it's been delivered. So I'm going to go to my mailbox, which is 150 miles away. Uh, I'm going to go uh, check that mailbox. It's going to be a long walk, so uh, I'll be back with you when I get close to it. All right. What's up, bitches? All right, guys. Almost there. I'm going to check my mailbox for my AR-15 Armors wrench. Yep. Here we go. Well, look at here. We got something. Let's see what we got. Well, holy mo, what's this thing here? I think it's the AR-15 Armors wrench. All right, I'll be back with you shortly. All right, bitches, I'm back. All right. This here is the AR-15 Armors wrench, um, so let's take it out and see what it's about. Look at here. Look at what we got. Alright. My first impression already is that this Armors wrench is, I didn't pay but like 19 bucks for it. It's actually $24.90 uh, something odd cents shipped. Um, it's very sandpaper-like feel. Uh, I could see where it could... Uh, scuff up the uh, finish on your AR if you nicked it on your upper or your lower or something because it is very very sandpaper like um, I could just probably spray paint this and give it a little bit smoother finish to where if I was twerking on it you know and accidentally slipped off and hit the finish on my AR it wouldn't you know put a little scratch mark on there but anyways um, here it is here's the uh, armor's wrench and uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut to the next part of the video. I've got to take the gas tube. <clears throat> uh, i got to take the uh, hand guards off. I've got to take the front little um, pin here out and take the gas tube out. And then we can work from there. I'll be back shortly. Alright guys, i got the, um, I got the uh, front sight. Uh, or no, not the front sight, but the uh, gas tube. And the gas tube roll pin uh, took out uh, from our upper here. And I just want to note exactly how filthy and dirty this uh, gas tube is, as you can see. Uh, this, go, this end goes into the receiver. And what happens is this goes into the uh, bolt like this. About, like, I would say about that far or something around there. And then it does this little routine back and forth. But you can see exactly how dirty that is. I don't know if you can actually see. What I'm talking about that thing is freaking filthy. As far as the uh, the uh, side or the uh, part or the end that goes inside the uh, front sight block, um, it's pretty filthy too. Now, some people say if you're if you got a gas leak inside your upper uh, or your um, gas block here, to leave this part dirty because that'll clog up the uh, the leak areas. If it's leaking. You keep shooting it enough, the uh, carbon will build up and create or uh, make a uh, a good a gas seal. But uh, you know me, I gotta have my stuff a little clean, at least halfway decently cleaned. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna simply wipe this off with a dry towel, no CLP or nothing today. If I was real cynical, I would CLP it, but you know that does make sense. Leave it a little dirty, and it'll, it'll be a more of a tight, uh, or you know the uh, the gases will seal a little bit better clean that off a little bit. So you can see the end, I'd have to get some CLP for the end and really clean that off. I was really cynical about it, but oh well. And here's the, uh, this here actually is not your average uh, front or your um, gas tube roll pin. This here originally came off the OPS 416 piston and it's a little, it's not hollow in the middle, it's just one solid piece. So, yeah. Anyways, I'll be back shortly with a different view. There you go. Oh, wow, that thing was actually, shit, that thing was loose as hell. I made one little turn and look, I can do it hand, it's hand tight. Look at this. Alright, alright guys, look at this. I barely, just one nudge and this thing is just loose as hell. Look at there. Look at that right there. There goes that. 
Alright, okay guys. Uh, Alright guys, I don't know if you can see this, but you see that little knob, that little knob right there? Let's see if I can find some better light here for y'all. Alright, right here should be good. Let me get over the, uh... Alright, here we go. I push the barrel. It's kind of coming loose on me. Alright, you see that little notch? Okay, that little notch right there. Uh, you know, it's doing that little routine, that little sa shakeage. Uh, let me put this on the bipod so y'all can actually see what I'm trying to say here. Now, as you can see, this little notch right here. Zoom it up right there. Okay, you see that little notch right there? Now, what happens is this whole barrel assembly, this whole thing, is moving like that. But then again, y'all just saw that barrel. See, 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 look, I'm doing this basically. I'm holding this and going back and forth. Okay, now look at that little notch there. Okay, let me see if I can get it to do it right here. Go let it focus. Oh, let me zoom out just a hair. All right there, okay. Now watch. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm to the conclusion that uh, that that barrel nut was just loose as hell. I mean, I, I just barely torqued it off. There's my uh, deal there. As you can see, there's that little uh, deal here. So I'm looking. I'm looking at the threads, trying to make sure everything's okay. Looks like there's some old grease built up around the threads here. Let me uh, take this off the uh, <clears throat> tripod here, so where y'all can see a little bit better. If you can see that or not, kind of see that that old grease built up. I'm gonna clean that up. Probably CLP it real good, and then uh, go around this whole threads with uh, some CLP. But there's the threads there, as you can see. Threads look pretty good. Doesn't appear to have any cracks because that barrel nut was on there loose as hell. I'm talking about that thing was loose. But anyways, uh, anyways, uh, I'll be back shortly, uh, and I'll uh, try and uh, torque it down to the right poundage. Alright guys, while I have this uh, part like this, I want to go ahead and make a little, or show you something that maybe some of you already know, those certified AR armorers out there probably already know this, but for the guys who just are, you know, just average shooters, dirt shooters, or any kind of shooters, um, you can just see the way the AR-15 is designed, everything is in line, okay? The, uh, the bolt's going to go back into the buffer tube, and that recoil of that bolt going backwards is going to go directly into your shoulder because there's if you think about it there's two no three recoils in one firing of a semi-auto the first recoil is when the hammer hits the firing pin strikes the primer of the bullet and the bullet goes down uh, the chamber there's one recoil and what that is the locking lugs are locked in place on the barrel there's one instant recoil because it's locked in place okay so that's the first recoil uh, after the bullet's about, I want to say, 100 yards down range because it travels lightning speed, then the gases by that time go back through the gas tube, come in through here, and it it makes the uh, the bolt push against the barrel, like it pushes against it, like that, okay, and it makes the bolt go to the rear in the buffer tube, and once the buffer itself bottoms out on this, then the receiver extension, you have another recoil, okay. And that, but all this happens so quick it only feels like one 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 kick of the rifle. Once the bolt travels all the way to the rear and that, that little buffer in there hits the back of the receiver extension, you feel that, that you know, recoil. And then once the uh, bolt travels forwards again, strips a new round into the chamber and slams forward, that's the third recoil. But all this occurs so fast in your mind you think it's just one one occurrence when there's actually three uh you know, three different things happening at once. So I just felt like I was going to, uh, you know, let y'all know about that. <clears throat> okay. So here's the uh, the threads here. The threads look very, very, very good condition. I cleaned it up a little bit, that grease on there. Um, now here's one thing I noticed I should have made note before I started this video. This, uh, this uh, upper receiver 
and the barrel nut right here, see this end of this barrel nut right there on this part, was not bottomed out against this upper receiver. There was like, you could almost see a thread. So it was on loose as hell. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I don't have a, <clears throat> a torque wrench with me right now. So what I'm going to do is, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to leave this like this. <coughs> In the next video uh, I upload, <coughs> <coughs> I'll continue from this part here. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like this. Video is to be continued. I don't have my torque wrench or one with me, but I'm going to have to borrow one from somebody because I can't find it because I'm a little jackass. That's the reason why I had to go buy one of these because I lost my last one. Alright guys, before I actually let y'all go, um, I do think that uh, the reason why this whole, uh, not the, just the front sight, but the whole um, you know, barrel assembly and everything was doing this routine here, Okay, I think it really had something to do with this barrel nut not being on here tight at all. I mean, it was on there loose as hell. So that being said, now, I'll see you bitches later.